from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from three donors. The first is Victoria Baltasara from Mississauga, Ontario, in memory of her husband Joe and deceased family members. For good health and healing and for the intentions of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. The second is Michelle Campbell from Centennial, Colorado, for world peace and for the Campbell family to come closer in their daily prayers. The third is an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta, for all the healthcare workers throughout the world. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, as we come once again to celebrate this Lenten Eucharist, we are reminded through the Gospel that at times when we are fearful, when we are filled with the fear, we allow ourselves to be buried and not acknowledge the love, the goodness that God has for us. So we are called to trust. We are called to place our trust in God so that we can experience the love that God has for us. Let us ask God's pardon and mercy for the times that we have failed to place our trust in God and in God alone. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Maria, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have made all those reborn in Christ a chosen race and a royal priesthood, grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to eternal life may be one in the faith of their hearts and, and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Say to the people, thus says the Lord God, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from every quarter and bring them to their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king over them all. Never again shall they be two nations, and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. They shall never again defile themselves with their idols and their detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. I will save them from all the apostasies into which they have fallen, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them, 
and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children shall live there forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Then the nations shall know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the Jews who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priest and the Pharisees called in a meeting of the council and said, what are we to do? This man is performing many signs. 
if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. So from that day on, they planned to put him to death. Jesus, therefore, no longer walked about openly among the Jews, but went from there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up from the country of Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and were asking one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear sisters and brothers, when we look at the context of the Gospel of today, the Jewish people came to console and to empathize with Martha and Mary for the loss of their brother Lazarus. They came to be with the mourn mourning people. They came because of the dead. But what they witness is life, a man being brought to life. More and more, Jesus' fame and glory began to grow, and the people who witnessed this go and report to the chief priest and the Pharisees. Obviously, fear engulfs them. So they ask the question, what are we to do? So Caiaphas answers, it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. He might be thinking purely on physical, earthly terms or in a practical way. If we take time to think about the reasoning behind this statement, we can understand the fear that the elders and the Pharisees had. The reading clearly states, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. The chief priests and the Pharisees were afraid of the Romans and of losing their position of power. When you take time to think of it, their fears are completely based on their unbelief. They had a greater fear for Rome than of God. A nation that was found by God, supported by God, liberated by God, has turned away from its commitment to God. The leaders could have very well known through Scripture, through history, how God has been protecting them through various kings. For instance, they could have studied about the leaders like Joshua, the various judges, the kings like Saul, David, Solomon. However, they do not believe in the power of God to protect them from the Romans. They forgot the God of their nation. They lived in fear of Rome instead the fear of God. Perhaps their source of fear was founded in the fact that they knew they were not following the ways of God, but doing their own will. So their only hope of protection was their own political maneuvering. It's also possible that they were in fear because of their sinful quest for power 
which blinded them to see, not to see what God was doing in their own eyes. They did not believe in their history and therefore did not trust God for themselves or the nation. This can be our fate as well. When we forget about the work that God has done in our lives, in our families, in our communities, we too can go astray and keep our faith and trust in others or material things rather than the living God. So, dear brothers and sisters, as we come closer to reflect on the sacrifice that God has made for us, let us remind ourselves of the love that God has for us. God has given us the gift of salvation as a free gift. And are we able to accept the offer that is given to us? Are we able to overcome the fear and place our trust in God? As we step into the Holy Week by tomorrow, let us acknowledge the wonders that God has done in our lives and walk firmly in faith to witness one man dying for the sake of the whole nation. Let us celebrate the gift of salvation that Christ brings to us through his death and resurrection. Let us bring to God our own needs and desires. Let's pray for the church as we enter the Holy Week. May it continue to be the source of goodness and peace to all the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For all the people of God, that we may acknowledge the goodness of God and the gift of salvation that Christ offers to each of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For those who do not believe in our trust in God, that they may be filled with gift and wisdom to understand the work God is doing in their midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. For all those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those looking for a deeper awareness of God through their London journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord. prayer. Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord of sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands, hands for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. May the gifts we offer from our fasting be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. And as an ex expiation for our sins, may they make us worthy of your grace and lead us to what you promise of for eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. I lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly right and just of a duty and of our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas, our bishop, all the clergy and the people of God you have gained for your own. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Our thanks to our donors for the gift. Of